What is going on, my people? You already know what it is. It's your boy, former NFL and AFL defensive back Eric Crocker. And today, we are getting into not two, not three, not four, the number one player on the NFL rising star list, the NFL PA's rising star list. How do they figure out who is number one? What goes into it? I was confused with certain things a little bit at first. We're going to dive into those things. And Brock Purdy. Living up to the expectations that are now set on him. A guy who just a year ago around this time was Mr. Relevant. Not really even expected to make San Francisco 49ers roster. But now he is more than expected to actually lead this team. I hope everybody's doing well. If you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe to this video. Subscribe to this video. But Brock Purdy, first, let's give him a round of applause for just how he performed last year with a lot of pressure on him taking over a team that had such high expectations. He went out there, he did his thing, of course, and now landing at the top of an NFL PA list. So my initial thoughts, before we get into kind of what goes into how they kind of form this list, I see Patrick Satan on there, and he's like number seven. And I'm like, why the hell is Patrick Satan on a rising star list when he this dude was just a first team all pro? And I'm like, wait a minute. There was another guy that was a rookie last year uh, that was first team all pro as well. We're talking about Sauce Gardner. And I'm like, where the hell is Sauce Gardner at? So how, and Brock Purdy did amazing, but there's other guys on there, Tony Pollard. I saw Brees Hall on there and Sauce is in. I'm confused. What goes into making this list? And then I kind of started doing some poking around and reading and I get it now. All right, so here we go. This is what goes into Brock Purdy being number one or, and we'll talk about why he is, but what goes into them just making this list in general. Poised to have a breakout season. I'd say we all agree. Brock Purdy is poised to have a breakout season. Gaining fan support. Uh, I think the 49er fan base is in kind of this weird thing they've been in in the last few years where half the guys like this guy, half the guys like that guy, half the rooting against this guy, that guy. But at the end of the day, uh, I think the voices that we hear as much on social media, right, like the things you see and stuff, that's a small percentage of the massive fan base that the 49ers have out there. And I'd say that there will be an overwhelming amount of support for Brock Purdy. So gaining fan support, uh, ranking among the top sellers of all the NFL official licensed player merch. So that's a big part too, right? And if you look at some of these guys, let's look at last year's. All right, so the 2022 guys on the veteran side, because they got a veterans list and a rookies list. But the veteran guys, all right, Trevon Diggs was number one, Dallas Cowboys. Huge market, probably the biggest fan base in America. And that's why they call them America's team, even though 49ers keep kicking their ass. All right. Uh, A.J. Brown, Philadelphia, very passionate uh, fan base, big. Uh, you know, we know how loud they can get and how they are about their team. So, of course, big time support for A.J. Brown. And the third guy, Hunter Renfro. And then we're like, Hunter Renfro, Las Vegas. But we do got to remember, like the Raiders have, first of all, they've been in three different cities uh, or markets between Los Angeles, Oakland, uh, Bay Area, and now uh, Las Vegas. But their fans, their fans are very supportive. And I know Raider fans, and I always wonder, like, why? Like, how? Still a Raider? You know? But they ain't going nowhere. They're diehard the Raider fans, and they support the team. So I get it. Those are the top three guys from last year. Uh, this year, at number one, yeah, Brock Purdy, 49ers. And not just Brock Purdy because he's on the 49ers. I think a lot of it also has to do with the position that he plays. Is Brock Purdy, 49ers, huge, massive fan base, all right? Uh, and he's playing the quarterback position. So out of the big market guys playing that quarterback position, I mean, I saw Jordan Love, I want to say he was like number three. 10 on the list. So it was like Jordan Love number 10 on the list. And I mean, what's he throwing? 50 passes. I could see why Brock Purdy is number one. The quarterbacks are going to get propped up a little bit. And then on top of it, the market, the fans already. I mean, there's kind of this Purdy mania. They call him uh, Glock. When I see Glock 30, Glock 40, Glock 15, I don't know. I see all these different nicknames for Brock Purdy, but clearly most of the fans are behind Brock Purdy and what's happening. You're going to see a ton of Brock Purdy jersey sales, which goes to kind of the last part, right? Like uh, ranking amongst the top sellers of the NFL and official licensed player merchandise. So his jersey, any T-shirt with him on there, I mean, shoot, coffee mugs, whatever, you know, hats, whatever is official NFL merchandise that'll be sold, 
I'm pretty sure Brock Purdy is probably going to be the leader of that. And we saw that, I mean, with, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, right? When he officially took over as quarterback of the 49ers, you go to the games, what do you see? Tens everywhere. Uh, you saw a lot of it with Trey Lance and not to the same extent, especially not what you're going to see from Brock Purdy. But, you know, the 49er fan base typically get behind guys and they're going to buy merchandise and they're going to do those things. And I think that's what you're seeing here. So, again, at first I'm like, why are there certain guys that are not on this list I'd expect to be on there? Well, Eric, I know I get it. Patrick Satan was a uh, first team all pro and so I was going there first team all pro, but it doesn't work like that. One, they're cornerbacks. So how marketable are they? I think Sauce does a good job with his name. Clearly, I didn't help him here. I mean, hell, his running back, Brees Hall, was higher on his list than him. I mean, shoot, Sauce wasn't even on the list. But Brees Hall was, like, in the top five, all right? Because running back, but still, market, big market, uh, where they're at, New York, all right? And some of the other guys that follow Brock Purdy. So you got Brock Purdy, 49ers, huge market. Garrett Wilson, New York Jets, huge market. Tony Pollard. Running back taking over for Ezekiel Elliott with Dallas Cowboys, huge market. So you see a lot of these guys are top of this list, huge market. You couple that with Brock Purdy being a quarterback, and not just a quarterback, uh, potentially the face of your San Francisco 49ers. It only makes sense while he'd be as high as he is. So uh, I was a little confused at first, but still, it is awesome. It is pretty cool to see one of your guys, one of your 49er players at the top of any list. And Brock Purdy, nonetheless, being number one according to the NFLPA. That's going to do it. Just want to kind of throw a quick video out there if anybody was wondering, well, what is this? What exactly is that? You know, we're going to break it down just a little bit. I'm pretty sure at uh, some other point this week, we'll probably get a little bit more in-depth, deeper on Brock Purdy and living up to the expectations that are set on him. All right. Is the Super Bowl a bus for him? I think that's going a little bit too far. But I think Brock Purdy is going to do a terrific job as a quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to this video. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.